So I assume if you're watching this video, you've probably seen the video over on my main channel about the swashplateless helicopter. Now what I'm going to do in this video is just go through all of the problems behind the scenes that I ran into and also how I actually coded this thing. I remember coming across James's video probably about four or five years ago. I'm going to refer to him as Jimmy as that's what he preferred when I contacted him. And back then all of the motor controllers had an update rate of 50 hertz which basically means you could change the motor speed 50 times per second. Now seeing as these blades spin at 50 hertz roughly uh, because it hovers at about 3000 rpm uh, that means I could only update the motor speed once per rotation which was just nowhere near fast enough to do this kind of control. Anyway, over the past few years, a lot of the uh, drone racing technology has moved forward and you can now get update rates of up to, I believe, 40,000 hertz, which is just insane. I actually couldn't get it working that fast on this, uh, so I'm running a protocol called OneShot125, which apparently has an update rate of 4 kilohertz, so 4,000 hertz. Uh, but with the uh, Tinsy board that I'm running and the Arduino code, I could only get it to run at about 500 hertz. But that's still 10 times per propeller rotation, so it worked fine. Now the next step was to figure out how would I configure the code to actually uh, take a pitch and roll input to then make a throttle output. And at first I actually uh, designed an if statement uh, logic thing. So if you were to pitch forward um, a certain amount, what it would do is for the first 180 degrees it would accelerate and then if the angle is above 180 degrees it would decelerate. So it was sort of just like a linear acceleration and deceleration. I then plotted these if statements into an Excel spreadsheet and then I could plot a graph to show me like what the throttle would look like as the motor spun around. And the problem was that the, the acceleration and deceleration was linear. And what you really want is you want a peak acceleration and deceleration at certain points in the rotation. And to get a like a slow and then a peak acceleration, deceleration, and then back down again, you almost need like a sine and cos wave, which is what I ended up using. So initially I'd written this whole long if statement code about if it's this angle to this angle, it will accelerate or decelerate, etc. But I ended up deleting it and replacing it with just one equation, which was basically the throttle output equals the throttle input plus the pitch value times a cos motor angle plus the roll angle times a sine motor angle. So in the end, the actual code for this thing was really simple. All it did was read the inputs, which would come from a drone flight controller or my control sticks, and then multiply it by cos or sine, the motor angle, depending on pitch and roll. I used the TNC 3.6 board to run this uh, equation and all of the read and write uh, loops, and it could do the whole loop in about 360 microseconds. So it's almost 2,800 times per second. Uh, the motor angle was measured with a magnetic encoder called an AS5047, uh, which also surprisingly kept up with that kind of uh, loop rate. Then what would happen is I ran a conventional drone flight controller in here which would do all of the PID loops and the pitch and roll uh, values and stuff and that would send the signals to the Arduino code, the Tinsy board, um, at 330 hertz I believe uh, because I could only get the flight controller to output those values as servo commands and 330 hertz was the fastest update rate uh, that the iNav software uh, would allow. The Tinsy board would then read these exact pitch and roll values from the flight controller and then do that uh, sine and cos calculation to then determine the throttle output. When I was testing uh, the motor on the wooden plank stand on the floor uh, to try and get the pitch and roll showing visibly in the high-speed camera, uh, I noticed that when the RPM increased, uh, the friction in the hinges increased and therefore the control output decreased. So the same control at 1000 RPM would then be reduced when it gets to 1500 RPM and then almost invisible by 2000 RPM. And through the Arduino serial port, I could actually log the data of the RPM, uh, specifically doing the acceleration deceleration. And you can actually see a clear uh, reduction in the amplitude of the sine wave um, as the RPM increased. So I ended up writing a short bit of code which essentially as the RPM would increase it would add like a dead band to the bottom of the uh, control output so it just means that whenever you do a control output it would be automatically increased past that uh, minimum friction value 
and this actually worked really well. You could visibly see that the blade pitches were similar throughout the RPM ranges and also the data logging was showing the same um, RPM changes. In the end I ended up scrapping that whole RPM compensation dead band equation that I had made uh, because it kind of made the outputs non-linear um, so a really small output would make a massive control output uh, which would just throw the helicopter out of control very quickly. Also I found it just easier to try and tune it for the 3000 RPM that this thing would hover at and also reduce the friction in the hinges in the rotor head and that just made everything a lot more linear and easier to control. Speaking of friction in the rotor head, I probably printed 10 to 15 of these rotor heads in total uh, due to crash damages and also redesigns. Uh, in the end I added washers and brass inserts to the hinges so that there was less friction between the plastics and also reduced the amount of wear because they're swinging back and forth so often uh, during the rotation the 3D prints would wear out and there would be a lot of play like in the in the hinges. In terms of the hinge angle, I tried adjusting that a few times. Uh, I started off with just 45 degrees just to see how that would work. And I tried reducing it to 35 degrees, which is actually what it's at now. Um, and that makes it really sensitive and more difficult to tune because uh, the it's more mechanically sensitive. So a tiny electronic output is a massive mechanical output. Um, in the actual video, the main video, I had uh, an angle of about 65 degrees from horizontal, so quite steep. And this made it easier to tune, um, easier to control, but the motor had to speed up and slow down a lot more. So the motor would get really hot. Um, I'm still not sure what's the most optimal design. I suppose it depends on what kind of blades you run and also how much torque your motor has. Um, but yeah, the more to vertical the hinge, the easier it is to tune but also the more load on the motor and the more to horizontal, the less stress on the motor and the harder to tune. I would like to try this with a more uh, torquey motor. This motor is 620 kV, which means at four cell voltage, it wants to run, I think what, eight, 9,000 RPM. But because it's only been used to 3,000 RPM, it's kind of over, rate, over RPM rated for this. So it's lacking in torque. Uh, if I had a lower kV, um, lower RPM motor, it might work a bit better. So that would be good to try out a more torquey motor just to see if it makes the controls a bit more easier. I would also like to try this with actual helicopter blades. Um, so not these uh, like fixed pitched um, sort of like drone propellers. Uh, instead of use actual helicopter blades and have a printed fixed hinge amount uh, just to see how that would work. Cause I think they would be a bit lighter and maybe a bit more predictable with the, with the hinging. Um, but that's something I'd like to try in the future. Unfortunately, I can't make the files and code for this uh, public for you guys to build one yourself because it is actually a painted uh, device. Uh, I spoke to Jimmy about it and he was fine with me making this video. Uh, so that's not a problem, but the I think what it was, what it came across as is he did it as his PhD uh, final sort of research paper and the university patented it and it's now owned by a licensing agency and I contacted them and they weren't really interested in um, sort of working with me uh, and they're US based so I just assumed that it would be fine to go ahead. Jimmy was fine with uh, me doing this so that's not a problem. However, I don't want to abuse that and release any of these files because um, then if you guys in the US download or build something, I don't know whether that will cause any issues. That pretty much wraps up this project. Um, as you can imagine, there were lots more hours than what I've just explained trying to work out these things, but that's a rough run through of all the uh, code and, and sort of the design of the rotor head. So I'd like to thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a thumbs up down below. If you're new to my second channel, then please click subscribe down below. And uh, I guess I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.